we thank God for the opportunity to come to his presence and to listen to his word and to trust in him and to affirm our faith in him even in such challenging times. Who knew that there would be a time that people are told don't go to church? Who knew that there would be such a time? And my message today is trusting God in challenging times. Trusting God in challenging times from a very unusual book that you hardly listen from it, uh, the book of Lamentation. People hardly preach from Lamentation, but has very, very powerful lessons on trusting God even in challenging times. A friend of mine told me a story of what happened in 1973. And in this story, there was solar eclipse. And for the first time in history, the young man saw on a broad daylight the world going to darkness. And he said he was so fearful of what was going to happen and even more to bring home the magnitude of the challenge at the time, he saw chicken going back to their nest because it was dark. And the man thought the world was coming to an end. Very challenging time. We live at a time that is very challenging in the history of the world this century. A time that is challenging our common health philosophy. The common philosophy is united we stand, apart we fall. That philosophy is being challenged now, that united we fall. We just have literally to stand apart to survive as a species. Social distancing is now the in thing that people talk about. I often think at, that we should be talking about physical distancing because socially we still need to catch up. We need to call our neighbors, we need to check on them how they are doing, but physically, even as we physically stay away from them. In our context, two things have happened that are not ordinary. They are not the normal things that are always happening in the world. Number one, we have seen the locusts. And these are real locusts, real ones, that we only knew of their existence through the biblical narratives that we could read. But now we can, we can see them. In fact, even a young man was making fun on social media, getting hold of a live locust and interviewing him live asking the locusts, what is your agenda in reality? Very challenging times. And now we have the COVID-19 virus, a virus that has literally shaken the whole world. It has closed learning institutions. It has closed churches. It has kept people away from their workplace. The markets are deserted. Even the closest neighbors are apart. It has caused total short shutdown in some cities and even in some countries, complete lockdown. Very challenging times. It has seen parents and children quarantined for 14 days on self-quarantine, like my friend Reverend Tarus on self-quarantine after going out to work very hard to provide for your family and you arrive home and you're told now sorry your beautiful kids will have to stay away from you for 14 days as we monitor your situation very very challenging times my daughter thought i was being a dictatorial dad when i told her no going to play as usual the normal playing ground out of bounds no more interaction with your friends. And 
I had to explain to her so slowly why this was happening without necessarily causing tension and blaming it on anybody. Very challenging times. There was something that was going on around on social media last uh, yesterday of a picture of the world, the globe, with a statement that closed down for repairs. Literally, the world is closed down for repairs. Challenging times. In the book of Revelation, the Israelites were going through a very challenging time in their history. Very, very challenging times. In fact, Prophet Jeremiah, who loved the Lord and who listened to God speak through him to the people, was also in it. And he had spoken about it countless times. He had told the people about the dangers that were happening that were coming countless times. And in the book of Lamentation, just as in the book of Job, the writer pictures a man of God who is puzzling over the results of evil and suffering in the world and asking serious questions, the same questions that we could be asking even as we go through these challenging times. But the good news is the Lord is on the throne. We will pull through together. Say amen. We shall not fear. The Lord is on the throne. He is in control of the affairs of men. A brief background of the book of Revelation and the story that we have just read here. On a Sunday morning, August 4th, 586 BC, Nebuchadnezzar, the no-nonsense king of Babylon, together with his armies, marched to the city of Jerusalem, the holy city and destroyed it. In fact, the city walls were brought down. The city itself was brought down to rubbles. And its temple, which always stood as a gentle reminder of the presence of God in the midst of his people. The temple that always people would brag when Jeremiah told them that the Lord is going to punish this city. People would say, if he punishes, we will run to the temple and we will be spared. And Jeremiah would tell them, the Lord is not confined to that thing. He can leave it. And the temple was brought down. In fact, the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar had been sent by the Lord to bring a heavy hand of the Lord's anger in the city of Jerusalem. And there are passages that are difficult to understand sometimes, and one of them is Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 6, where the Lord says, My servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Just imagine the Lord saying, My servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar was a no nonsense fellow. He had no stomach for mercy, and to him justice was something that was in the dustbin. When he marched on the city, if you survive, you will tell your worst enemies, don't play with him. And in this time, he marches. Perhaps we may not understand how bad the situation was. We may not understand from the few verses that we have read in chapter 3, verse 22, because these are passages of hope, a message of hope that stands out in the book of uh, Lamentation. But how bad was the situation? Let us take one step behind into chapter 2 so as to get just a quick overview of how bad the situation was. But even in such challenging times, the Lord through Jeremiah reminded the Israelites and by extension he is reminding us to trust in him even in challenging times. How bad was the situation? In chapter 2, we know that the situation was both frightening and devastating at the same time. How frightening and devastating was it? In chapter 2, verse 1, the glory of Israel, the temple, was no longer protected by the Lord. Remember the Israelites' philosophy? If the Lord punishes us, we will run to the temple and we'll be free from that danger. The temple is no longer protected by the Lord. Chapter 2, verse 2, what is happening? Children begged food from their mothers. Frightening and devastating. 
You can't imagine a child saying, Mama, please help me, Mukate. And Mama saying, no, this Mukate is all mine. It is everyone for himself. Frightening and devastating. Chapter 2, verse 3, the Lord's right hand has been withdrawn. Lamentations talks about the horn, which symbolizes the strength. The horn is gone. The strength is gone. Chapter 2, verse 4 is even frightening. It says, the Lord seems to be on the side of the enemy against Judah. Notice that the Lord is not an enemy. He seems to be acting. It seems as though he is supporting the enemy, the Babylonians, against Judah. Very, very frightening and painful at the same time. <coughs> when your friend lets you down, it is so painful. Of course, when an enemy lets you down, what do you expect of an enemy anyway? But when your friend lets you down, it is so painful. In the story of Brutus in William uh, Shakespeare, Julius Caesar, talks about the pain of a friend's betrayal. Because it is expected that a friend will stand with you even in tough times. But in verse 4, the Lord is acting as though he is supporting the enemy against Judah very, very dangerous and painful. In verse 6, traditions are gone. In fact, it talks about all the regulatory traditions that were set by the Lord through the Mosaic law no longer meant anything to him. It is closed for repairs. All the Mosaic tradition no longer meant anything to the Lord. A senior lawyer in this great nation told me one time that when you hear a judge mention this statement, that due to public demand or due to public interest, he said, be very, very careful with what he wants to say next. Because at that time, at such moments, he can break the law and even the constitution. And then he said, you remember what happened between Jesus and Barabbas? Public demand, public interest, took charge, took over. So in verse 6, Mosaic law, the traditions are gone. Frightening and devastating. In verse 7 of chapter 2, the sanctuary is abandoned. This is the holy temple. It is abandoned. Before Nebuchadnezzar and his army marched to Jerusalem, the Lord's Ark of Covenant behind the Holy of Holies, the Lord had left it there. In fact, the people did not even notice his departure. The priests went on with their duties as usual, not even noticing the lack of God's presence in the temple that was radiated in the Holy of Holies. The Lord left. He abandoned. Verse 9, there is no vision and no law. That is, the Lord no longer addressed them in vision. In verse 10 of chapter 2, it talks about we were bowed to the ground. What happened? Listen to what it says in chapter 2, verse 10. Just to bring out how difficult the situation is, the elders of the daughter of Zion sit on the ground, keeping silence. They have cast up dust on their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The maiden of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground, says Jeremiah. Bowed to the ground. What that means is that Nebuchadnezzar, after laying the siege on Jerusalem, he left the old, he left the poor, he left the ignorant in the land because they were of no economic use and importance to the Babylonian dynasty or kingdom. And so those who survived the siege could do nothing 
but mourn the loss of their kingdom with their heads bowed to the ground. Very devastating. In fact, from Jeremiah's own testimony in verse 11, babies fainted because of starvation as mothers ran through the streets. Frightening and devastating at the same time. In verse 12, children cried to their mothers for food and mothers did nothing to satisfy their needs. In verse 13, the situation is just devastating. In verse 14, which is even frightening, there were false visions and prophecies. The prophets who are supposed to be directing people away from sin led them into great sins. A lot of that is happening right now. We hear a lot of things that are going around on social media, a lot of prophecies. And some are saying, if you don't forward this to 10 people in the next one hour, you will be dead by the close of business today. Shindwe Kabisa. False visions and prophecies. Verse 18, it talks about tears, the destruction that brought heartaches to the people. Even in verse 20 was even more extreme. Women took drastic measures to survive, including eating their own offsprings. Very, very devastating times. But what does the Lord remind us through Jeremiah in the Lamentations in our context today? What lessons can we learn from Jeremiah that brings to our attention even as we face these challenging times? As the Lord is reminding us not to fear because he's on the throne, he's in charge, what lessons are coming to the fore from this passage? Allow me to bring three lessons to our attention this morning for our reflection and meditation even as we trust in him in these challenging times. Lesson number one. In life, challenging times will come. In life, challenging times will come. And in such moments, strengthen your faith in God. Chapter 2, verse 4. Jeremiah is reminding us that challenging times will come in life. Jeremiah was a prophet of God, called by God, commissioned by him to speak his word, but when challenging times came, he was not away, he was not kept away from it. He went through those challenging times. Brothers and sisters, my friends whom I love so much, in life challenging moments will come. Remember, I'm using the word will come. I'm not using the word may come. May suggests a possibility of it not coming. Will suggests a reality that it is just a matter of time. But that challenging moments, those challenging moments will come. Remember, it is not if, it is when. When the challenging moments will come. Jesus talking to his disciples in the gospel of, according to uh, John, the gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 33, says these words, In the world you will have tribulations. You will have, not his will, not may. In the world you will have tribulations. But take heart, I have overcome. Friends, brothers and sisters, Jeremiah is gently reminding us, to trust in God in challenging times because in life challenging moments will come and in such moments don't run away don't fear trust in God strengthen your faith as we go through such moments we need to strengthen our faith in God in challenging moments sometimes people can start doubting the existence of God and you start hearing, where is God? We say God does not exist. You will start hearing such philosophies coming. In challenging times, people can start doubting the existence of God. Do not doubt him. Jeremiah went through very tough moment, but he never doubted the existence of God. In fact, he saw the testimony of God 
through his activities in nature and in human existence, and he even experienced it as he walked with him every time. And to Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, this was not a question. He never doubted. The question of does God really exist never came to Jeremiah's mind in challenging times. Do you sometimes face such moments that you ask, where is God? You start doubting his existence? Don't doubt his existence. In challenging times, trust in him because challenging moments would come. In challenging times, some people can start doubting the power of God. They can start asking, is God really powerful? I mean, God is demonstrating that he's powerful. It is so clear. Who had seen a virus stopping the world? Who had seen a virus that we cannot see stopping, literally stopping the world? Closing people to their homes. Not because there are bandits outside, but because there is a virus that you cannot see. You are fighting an enemy that you cannot see. In challenging times, some people can doubt the power of God. These challenging times are affirming to us and reminding us that God is still powerful and on the throne. Jeremiah saw hands, saw fire in the hands of the Babylonians. He saw fire. He was in it himself. He saw fire in the hands of the Babylonians. These were guys who, know, who knew how to torture. If there was anything that is called the torture curriculum, it was in their hands. They knew how to torture people. But he never doubted the power of God to deliver them. And it took like 490 years for God to use a heathen king to give an executive order for the Israelites to go back. The power of God. Some people can doubt the power of God. When challenging moments come, brothers and sisters, in our nation and across the world, let us not doubt the power of God. Let us trust in him and affirm our faith in him. In challenging times, some people can even doubt the goodness of God. Do not doubt his goodness. Habakkuk, in chapter 3, verse 17, and 18, going through challenging moments in life, said, though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes in the vine, yet I will trust in the Lord. In challenging times, because they will come, let us keep our faith firmly grounded in the word of God. He is still on the throne. Nothing has gone out of his control. Brothers and sisters, in such challenging times, let us learn to strengthen our faith in God. Let us trust him more, let us pray more, let us affirm our faith strongly in God. Because challenging times do come in the world. Do not fear. Lesson number two that Jeremiah brings to our attention in this passage he reminds us a gentle reminder as believers. He reminds us that believers are not cushioned from challenging moments in life. Believers are not cushioned from such challenging moments. Chapter 2, verse 11. Jeremiah went through the challenging moment himself. Listen to his testimony. And this is a prophet, a man of God whom God was speaking to him to deliver the message. He was not cushioned from such challenging times. And what was his message in chapter 2, verse 11 of the book of Lamentation? He says, my eyes fail from weeping. My emotions are deeply disturbed. My heart is poured upon the ground in grief because of the destruction of the daughter of my people. Because infants and nursling faint in the streets of the city. Jeremiah was not cushioned from such rough ages of life. Friends, we are not cushioned from the rough ages of life. Do not fear. We are not cushioned from such. 
You've heard of people singing the song Tamparare Kweso and Tamparare that is for toddlers. Tough times will come and we will all face the tough times because we are not cushioned from it. COVID-19 virus does not choose that I will jump this one because he's a believer. We are not cushioned from that. The locust does not choose the farm to attack. We are not cushioned from the rough edges of life. Jesus in the gospel reminded the disciples that in such tough moments, be assured of my presence. So even as we go through this tough moment, let us always be sure that the Lord is with us. Jeremiah preached countless warning messages to the people. He reminded them of the power of God to stop the business and the affairs of the world. He also reminded them of the standards of God. But when people could not listen and God punished the people, Jeremiah was not exempted from the punishment. We are not cushioned from challenging moments. So don't doubt God. Don't doubt your faith. Affirm your faith in God. My workplace closed uh, last week because of the normal challenge that we are all going through. And I had left my notebook in the office and I said, the next day I'll go pick it. And as I went to pick my notebook, the place was all silent. It was like a ghost town. And for the first time, it dawned on me the magnitude of the challenge we were facing. Security personnel who knew me would stop me and ask me, where are you going? Challenging moments. When Jeremiah walked through the streets of the holy city of Jerusalem, what he saw was nothing but pain, suffering, and destruction. In fact, Isaiah talks about it even more graphically. He says, what you could hear in the streets were the noise of the jackals. The jackals had left the forest, the wild, and were barking in the streets. Tough moments. When sickness, when, when pain and suffering comes, believers are not cushioned from these rough ages of life. But in such moments, we need to continue trusting in him, not being fearful. The Lord is in control, in control of the affairs of men. There will be a time when just in a flip second like this, all this will stop. We should not fear. Friends, the Lord is still on the throne. Let us keep our faith firmly in him. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Lesson number three and the final one for this morning. Jeremiah is gently reminding us through the book of Lamentation that God is faithful to his word even in challenging moments. God is faithful to his word even in challenging moments. Let us turn to him in prayer and repentance. He is faithful. In Chronicles, he reminds us that if my people, the people who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, I will listen. The Lord is faithful to his word even in such challenging moments. In the passage that we read, chapter 3, verse 22, this passage stands as a beacon of hope. An encouraging verse, even in the challenging situation. He says, it is by the Lord's mercies and love and kindness that we are not consumed. Because his compassion never fails. The Lord sticks to his word. He is faithful to his word. These words are a statement of faith that are standing strong in the midst of suffering. It is shining the light of hope amid challenging situations. God being merciful and loving, he sometimes even uses suffering to draw us close to him. And this is a painful part. He sometimes would use suffering to draw us close to him. And so what does that mean to our context? Even as we close business, 
in the fight against this virus. It is a time for us to turn to God in prayer and repentance. Individually and as families. Individually, if you are in self-isolation, turn back to God in prayer and repentance. As families, as you are isolating yourself as a family, turn to God in prayer and repentance. God is faithful to his word even in such challenging times. Prophet Habakkuk affirmed his faith to God in God in challenging times. He said, God, I will still trust in you. Though things may not go the way I've been thinking, I will still affirm my faith in you. God is faithful. We may not understand why certain things happen, but one thing is for sure, that God is faithful to his word. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, as we go home, as we part ways to our private homes and lock our doors and stay indoors until this storm is over, let us remember, in life, challenging times would come. Let us put our faith and strengthen our faith in God. Let us remember that as believers, we are not cushioned from such challenging moments. Do not fear. Do not fear. We are not cushioned from them. But the presence of the Lord is with us. And let us remember that God is faithful to his word, even in challenging moments. Let us turn to him. Let us affirm our faith in him. Let us trust in him. Are you out there and you have not made a commitment to follow the Lord Jesus Christ? It is not business as usual in the world. It's not business as usual. And even in our spiritual warfare, it is not business as usual. Are you out there and you have not purpose to give your life to Christ? At this time of self-meditation, even as you stay away in your own home, think about your relationship with Christ and trust in him even in challenging times. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.